here is, uh, that's, that's a small picture of the Grecian Sphinx. We'll look at some more later. That's from the cover of the Bylaws and Constitution. And you can see that under the slab, there's some writing here in between there. We've got to talk about that and find out something about that. In the book called the Dictionary of S the Dictionary of Symbols, I found they had a listing for a Grecian Sphinx. And, and what you know about Greece is it has to have breasts like a woman, face up. They said we serve one maiden only. We serve one maiden only. All of them. And that's another picture of a Grecian Sphinx in a book on the Dictionary of Symbols. Now, and this uh, is important. I was looking up, I have a definition here that if I can find, I want to show you uh, that has uh, some significance. I'm going to ask, uh, if he would, uh, to have a Brother Ashwa Kwesi come up and join me, if, he, if I could be so honored. And uh, Brother had just come in town today from out of town, and uh, uh, Brother Jamal and I and Brother talked on the telephone, and he looked at some of the symbolism that was encased in the Grecian Sphinx. Uh, here is a larger uh, version. I'm going to get an even larger uh, version. But there's certain things there that you should take a look at uh, just before I step back a second. Remember there's Sigma Pi Phi. Look at the tail in the form of an S. Sigma. The wings are in flight. There's the urn. The urn has significance. Now in another picture I'll show that in the urn is the 360 degrees of knowledge. There's a little wheel in there that goes, there's a little circular wheel. I'm going to show you that uh, off of another picture. Uh, again, we just go through another link in. There's that concept of that round table again. Uh, you got to pull back on symbols. When I looked in the dictionary of symbols, it said under the word pi, says pi comes from the Chinese word that means round table. Sigma pi phi. Anyway, that's, that's a whole nother discussion. Uh, brother, I've asked brother to share with you, let me find the best picture of it. Let's see, I've said it here. Uh, ask that he can share with you, uh, and I'm going to ask if he would do this one again just before we do that. If he would, uh, okay, you hold that one. I have this one here. I'll show it. I'll put it up while you do it. I can put it up. Okay, uh, if he could explain again, just so we can get it on the camera, about what that, what that means, which is put in there for, just not arbitrary. When you're dealing in Masonic symbolism or secret society symbolism, you're not arbitrarily picking things and putting them there. And I just want him to say again what that might mean, uh, just for the record. First of all, I want to say hotel. 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 And uh, giving thanks to Brother Copley for uh, exposing the house Negroes. <laughs> uh, keep in mind when you go back as far as you can, all this first of all came up out of Africa. Only the symbols have been distorted, manipulated, to the point where we don't know what it means today. Now when we go back to Prometheus, now it talks about Prometheus, where did he have to go? When the Greeks say they had to cross the burning sands, you don't go north of Greece to cross the burning sands. There's no desert in Europe. He had to cross across the Mediterranean, and there's some burning sands there. What desert is that called? Sahara. 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 That's where the knowledge was. He had to go to Mount Olympus. What was Mount Olympus? That was the land of Ethiopia. This is where the light of knowledge was. So in terms of passing the torch, this was symbolic of passing the light. So when the French, by the way, when they had the French Revolution there, uh, Thomas Jefferson was also involved with that. Okay, the overthrow of the French government during that time. So, when America set up here, what statue did they give to America? The Statue of Liberty. What symbol do you see the Statue of Liberty kept holding? The torch. The torch. The torch of what? The light of what our ancestors called Haru. The light of knowledge. All coming from African people. That's why somebody knows something about us that we don't know about ourselves. They know we're the originators of the knowledge. We are the originators here. Now, brother, brother, you have the other one. Uh, which one you want? This one? 
Okay. Now, we, we were looking for, as I showed you the Grecian Sphinx in the other book, we were looking for every Grecian Sphinx we could find, and we found this in Manly Palmer Hall's book under the heading of the Initiation of the Pyramid. We found this picture of the Grecian Sphinx. And uh, I know you probably read the caption under there, and uh, you see there are certain symbols underneath it. Uh, this looks uh, uh, similar to, and let me just see if I can find a larger copy, brother, just to set this up for you. I want to put their logo right next to it. And I got the version of theirs, the biggest one I had, right in my hand during the lecture. Right in one spot. Oh, here we go. You want to make, uh, nah, nah, that ain't it. Well, I'll find it in a second. It was the best picture of that Sphinx that I had. Uh, well, I used this other one. Don't look like I'm going to find that one. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. Okay, let, we better just go ahead off of that one. This is, uh, brother's going to go into this a little bit and help us understand what they're trying to say here. And again, we're going to look at the uh, ancient Medonetra symbols here. The symbol here, this is called Kephara. Kephara, this is the symbol for life. <coughs> this symbol here is called Ta. This symbol here is called Nair. This one here, I'm not quite familiar with the ending here. Basically what it's saying here is uh, self-creation of light of the land lord. Now, the feudal landlords in Europe came where? Here. So what they're saying here, they are the creation of light of the new land lords. Oh, shit. This is the land of the new landlords that most of us rent from the landlords. The new world order boys. Huh? The new world most order boys. Don't own. So that's basically what they have here. So I have right here from Kemet, long before there were any Greek freaks around, our ancestors have, there's the symbol of the Neb right here. Neb, creation. The Kepara symbol means to create. Wings meaning immortality, meaning spirit. That's what African people dealt with, African spirituality. And Ra meaning the light of Haru, created in the image of Ra. Again, you see the blue, because these colors, these are our colors too, by the way. Red, white, and blue. They don't belong to the Greeks. They don't belong to America. You see the blue on top of the scarab. The scarab was symbolic of the great mind. Huh? Now, in the third degree, Brother Copley said that it was the third degree that was the blue degree, is that right? That was yes. the blue degree of the knowledge, is that right? So the scarab represented the cranial cavity of the brain, of the knowledge of the mind, of Ptah, the creator of the universe, the first concept of monotheism, or concept of one God. So it is here. You have to say that over one time. The first concept of one God. Gotcha. 